Northern Moor again this week. Plan for today or this afternoon is to make my way down towards Steeperton and then either pitch on the top or near the top of Steeperton Tour, depending on the wind. And if not, then maybe Hound Tour, the other Hound Tour. It's a long walk to the one from the Hound of the Baskervilles. Here we go then, Bellstone Tour. Amazing, quite a big tour. Next stop, Higher Tour. The granite that makes up the Dartmoor Tours was formed around 300 million years ago. The combination of the contraction of the cooling rocks and the subsequent weathering gives the tours their unique forms and structures that we see now. And I made it to Oak Tour. It's out of the wind for lunch. Today we have a Malcolm Barnacat's pasty from Pool in Cornwall. I had that in about two minutes. Oh, those are the biggest albino rabbits I've ever seen. Is the pub open? Probably not. Alright, they're all queued up waiting for it to open. Alright, so taking the track, continuing on from Oak Tour. See Steeperton Tour now getting closer. Uh, it looks deceptive. It looks like you just scoop cross straight up, but there's a little valley you need to go down and across the river. Make some new friends in a minute, I think. Just going up to uh, Stand on the path, I want to go down. Hopefully it's friend, not foe. Right, there's Steeperton. So you can touch this, it's really to approach this one. You can uh, probably see the, the little path, the diagonal path going up to it. That would be kind of the uh, aggressive short approach. So just drop straight down into the valley, probably get my feet crossing the river, or take your shoes off. And then straight up the other side. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is kind of like walk past at all. Alright, so you can see where I've come up from the uh, the river. Up to Hanging Stone Hill will go that way. And uh, then I'm going to take this path up here. You can see how it leads up to the tour. So making it to uh, the top of Steeperton Tour. That view uh, to Marsh right down the valley. So, you can see I'm not far from the top of uh, Steeperton Tour. Quarter of a mile. Um, it's absolutely beautiful down here. Right, so the theme for today is what's the bare minimum you can take and still be relatively comfortable? It'll be interesting to find out what is relative comfort because I think that it's a lot less than I had previously assumed. So let's find out. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Oh, seven minutes. So as I was saying earlier, the purpose of this trip was to try and really challenge myself in terms of uh, stripping out gear, which perhaps um, I don't need. So start off with a pack. So I bought this off of eBay. It cost about 12 pounds. It's a 20 litre pack. The reason that I picked this one, there's lots of different ones available, is that it had a pocket on the outside, which I could use to put my shelter in, and also had two pockets either side for water bottles. It's a bit of a challenge trying to fit everything into a 20 litre pack for a weekend. It is possible to get two days worth of food in there. Let's open the pack up and I'll show you what's in there. So I guess on the outside first you've got a one litre water bottle and then I've got my usual uh, three litre catadine. Then I've got my waterproof coat and my boot kit. Uh, ditty bag that's got most of my gear in there. Food, I'll get to that in a bit. Cook set, jacket, tent, uh, waterproof trousers, and then a spark zero. And the bag weighing in at 150 something, 155 grams or something. 
is about 120 grams saving over my next smallest rucksack. But this is significantly smaller. It's not particularly comfortable, the straps on it aren't great. So for the 110 gram weight saving, having carried it for a few hours today, I would probably say it's not worth it. In terms of the other gear which is in the pack, um, the cook set's the same as last weekend. See to Summit X mug, Plex 550 Ultralight, DRS and a mini Bic. Where I did make the, the, the biggest savings, I had two packing cases, one for food and the other one which contained everything else. And then even within that white DCF packing case, there were bags within bags within bags with different things. So I had a wash kit, a first aid kit, um, a ditty bag, an electrics bag, uh, and then a few other things thrown in there. So this is where trying to be critical I've, I've probably taken the most volume out um, certainly taken some weight out and um, so everything fits in the electric bag now so I've got the Michael 10,000 brick inhaler extra gear I've got a link to my Instagram be a photo of this on there yesterday I think it's a microphone because the wind call was affecting the audio quality of the last video I can't figure out how to work it typical bloke who didn't read the instructions um, and when I plugged it in I couldn't get any um, audio through so I need to actually probably watch a YouTube video on how to use this and get it to work with the phone and then the the charge cable for, for those microphones cable for my phone and then if you look in here, this is the combination of the wash bag and the, and the first aid kit. So, toothbrush, toothpaste, paracetamol, compedes, oh sorry, compedes, some steri tabs. So I've got 12 steri tabs just in case anything happens to my filter. Tip removers and my pen knife with the scissors. It's a worthwhile exercise in challenging myself to be able to do that. Okay, so moving on to food. A few mug shots for tea tonight. Got confused, and they're supposed to be two of the same flavour. Never mind. Asian pasta and tomato and herb. I'm sure they're not the combination. And then, it's for breakfast tomorrow. Porridge. And then snack for tomorrow on the way back. Cheddars, cheese, pepperoni, and then teas, coffee, sugars. All right. Well, it's roasting hot. Let's put times. Water on the go for a cup of tea. I now fully appreciate um, the videos at the end of the David Attenborough documentaries where they show the teams of camera crews who sit in a freezing cold hide for seven months to get a 15 second clip of some rare animal. Um, there's some really nice blue dragonflies and I must have spent at least half an hour trying to get them on video but to no avail. Well, I've been wearing these for, I don't know, five, eight hours. Um, I've just noticed that they're on inside out. And the liners are on the outside. Interesting look. That's better. A watch pot never boils. Never a truer word said. How are you? Almost. Good enough, I reckon. Just like the 
the stream. I mean, I can't believe how much room there is in here. When you take less stuff, you can always fit two people in. So, sleeping bag, pretty thin. My usual setup, wearing my rain trousers. I've got my coat, my waterproof coat, if I need another layer. So in terms of just making use of the clothing, ensuring that it fulfills more than one use, I think it's the key to making sure that your base weight comes down. Right, I'm gonna get my head down so that I can hopefully wake up early and catch a sunrise. I'm a night owl. Um, it's very rare for me to see a sunrise, so I think I might have to set an alarm. Night all, see you in the morning. Right, good morning. Uh, if you want to catch the sunset and the sunrise in the middle of summer, you're not going to be getting a huge amount of sleep uh, and also see some stars. Uh, I'll, I'll give my thoughts on how comfortable the, the night's sleep was uh, at the end. But, uh, it's about four o'clock now, I think. I think I got up at half past three to, uh, to set the time lapse up. Uh, it's looking pretty good this morning. I've got about six miles to go. Um, I'm just going to flip this round. Let's see, we're heading up this way to how tall. Well, you do get a feeling that you get the horse to yourself anyway it's such a massive area but I think when you're up at sunrise even more so next stop oh, I can see anything bigger than sunlight I'm going to head up to the top of that hill over there which is Constant Beacon just approaching the stone circle beside Hounds Hall got some painted cows this morning trudge hundreds of miles to Stonehenge. There's loads of stone, stone circles up here on Dartmoor. I dare say you'd have a more spiritual experience by yourself in one of these than with 10,000 other people at Stonehenge on summer solstice. Okay, just approaching the top of Coston Hill to get to Coston Beacon. Dropping down off the northern side of Boston Beacon, heading back towards Bloodstone. As you start to drop down now, you can really get a sense of the moorlands coming to an end and then moving into, I guess, well, not modern agriculture, but it's been there for thousands of years, but agriculture anyway. 
it's still a green and pleasant land, don't get me wrong. But I'd rather be up here than down there. And I'd rather be down there than in a city. Always on path. Right, you can let me come through, girls. I want to go there on the short grass. I guess it's short grass because you guys eat it all. So I should be thankful for that. This blonde one doesn't look too happy to see me. Funny, I thought you know the ones which are going to be uh, aggro as soon as you see them. So, as I make my way down off the side of the beacon, uh, I think I have some thoughts from my camp. So, first of all, my pitch selection was pretty poor. So, what I thought was long grass was actually just big lumps of hard ground. And when you compound that with the eighth inch uh, sleeping foam mat then I didn't make for the best night's sleep having said that when I went to sleep um, it was fine so would I stick solely to that mat in the future no definitely not the rucksack is a, an epic fail it's too uncomfortable also trying to fit everything into a 20 litre pack is too much of a pain it's a step too far for me anyway so back to the standard pack but I think that definitely made improvements in terms of the amount of ancillary stuff I'm bringing. Uh, that was uh, the revelation for this trip. Sat on the bench admiring the view. Come down off Cosden Hill, you can see down to the river and back up the other side. Nearly back to the car now. All the pubs are close. But it's quarter to eight in the morning. Oh, it's just coming back to Bellstone Car Park. End of the trip. Cars there.